praise the Lord. We are back on Psalm 86. And in this Psalm, it's a prayer of David, King David. When he was in problem, how he cried out to the Lord in prayer. And it says here in the first verse, of verses 1 to 5, Bow down your ear, O Lord, hear me. What a way of, of praying, what a way of crying out to God in prayer. Bow down your ear and hear me, O Lord, for I am poor and needy. When difficulties come upon us, we must know who to go to. We have the Lord who is, His ears are open for our prayer. Preserve my life, for I am holy. You are my God. How many of us can say that we are holy? How many of us can say like what David says? That means a man of integrity. A man who had a good relationship with God. And it says here, Save your servant who trusts in you. I am your servant and I trust in you. And because I trust in you, you will save me. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. David was all the time, he must have been in severe trouble. Maybe he was running away from King Saul when he was living a lonely life in that cave Adullam. When he was all alone, the, all his people had forsaken him. He was alone. When he was alone, he must have been crying out to the Lord, communicating with the Lord. He was cut off from his family, cut off from, from his, uh, his kingdom, cut off from his people, cut off from the, the daily way of life. He was cut off. He's hiding in a cave. And here a king with his army, with choice soldiers were after him to take his life. And maybe at that time, David was crying out this prayer to God. He says, Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive, and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. All those that call upon the Lord, the word of God says, will not be put to shame. Those that put their trust in the Lord, will not be put to shame. We know how God answered this prayer. When David was in so much problem, when he cried to the Lord, how the Lord answered this prayer. He protected David every time. Even though a, a whole army was against David for one person, to try to pin him down somewhere, to capture him, to kill him. But the Lord was on his side. And therefore we can say, when the Lord is on our side, who to be afraid of? And David put his trust in the Lord, and therefore the Lord protected him. We see at every turn, Saul came almost about, almost about to kill David, and the Lord preserved him. We see it at other places also. We see that David had two opportunities. God gave Saul into the hand of David. I don't know whether it was uh, God trying David, uh, David out, putting him to, to the test, if he would put his hand against his enemy, because we know what David said. David had two opportunities, or maybe more than that, but he did not raise his hand against the Saul, against Saul. He says, who am I to raise my hand against the Lord's anointed? David knew that King Saul was an anointed king of Israel, and David was also anointed, but he honored the anointing that was upon his senior, at one time, Saul was his king. He honored that kingship. He honored that anointing. God has chosen him. So who am I? Who am I to talk against God's anointed? Praise God for David. <clears throat> we learn lessons from this. I myself learned a lesson from this. From verses 6 to 10, it says, When I call you, you will answer. There is no God like you. No one can work like you. David says he knows who his God is. There's no God like his God. There's no God like the God of Israel. And he says over here, no one can work like you work. How God arranges things to deliver his people, to preserve his people, to provide for his people. You know, in times of difficulties, we have heard testimony of how God provided for his people, how he protected his people. You know, the, the Christian community, the believers of Jesus Christ, are the most persecuted lot on this earth. The most persecuted lot on this earth are the Christian people. Every year there are almost 3 lakhs people giving their lives for the name of Jesus Christ around the world. Almost 3 lakhs. 
it happens in no other religion it happens for no other god but for our god jesus christ there is persecution against them and therefore god protects he knows how in the day of trouble i will call upon you and you will answer me in verse 7 he says that in my day of trouble when i call you will answer me because our god is a prayer answering god hallelujah in verses we see over here 6 to 10 what all david is saying over here among the god there is none like you o lord no other any works like your works all nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you o lord and shall glorify your name all nations will come and worship you that means a prophecy of the kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ where all people of all nations of all languages will come and bow down before the lamb of god before the throne of god and the lamb sitting in the midst of the throne will be worshiped by all nations people of all tongues and all languages will worship him praise the lord and it says in verse 10 for you are great and do marvelous thing you alone are god hallelujah that is final he alone is god there is no other god and from verses we see 11 to 13 it says something here teach me your way o lord i will walk in your truth unite my heart to fear your name hallelujah teach me your way o lord i will walk in your truth unite my heart to fear your name hallelujah that means david is praying because only god can change the heart only god can change the attitude and when my heart is united with the heart of the lord jesus christ it can do the impossible it can do what normally we can't do when the heart of man is is uh, united with the heart of his lord and savior he becomes a different person when god when the people of israel wanted saul as their king god reluctantly agreed but he had to do something he had to do something to saul after saul met samuel and after he, samuel told him that he was anointed of god and that he was going to be the king of israel when saul samuel blessed saul and sent him away anointed him and samuel told him that god will change you into another man and as saul went and he joined with the prophets the spirit of god came upon samuel or saul and it says here in the in the word of god that he became a different person hallelujah the spirit makes the difference the word of god makes the difference in our lives and saul was changed into a different man hallelujah and therefore david says here teach me your way o lord i will walk in your truth in verse 12 it says i will praise you o lord my god with my, with all my heart and i will glorify your name forever verse 13 it says for great is your mercy towards me and you have delivered my soul from the depths of sheol sheol you know when you go through problem it's like hell problem is like hell and where you cannot fend for yourself you can't fight for yourself you can't defend yourself when you have to defend upon the mercy of god and all around negative things happen it's like hell hell on earth sometimes we go through those type of situations here where we find there's no help anywhere but the lord in his mercy has delivered us and we have come so far many times we have been through the situation uh many you have been through that situation and then you saw that it was only god's hand that could deliver us hallelujah so we thank the lord for all this beautiful psalm that he has given us in verse 14 and 15 it says the proud have risen against me and want to take my life that is what happened when the people of god face unreasonable people ungodly people it is difficult they cannot reason they cannot understand the faith of god's people they cannot understand what the people of god are wanting and doing their minds are so corrupt they can't see the good they can't see the good and they can't bear so they want to remove anything that tries to correct them in their evil way they are bent on doing evil they want to do evil they want to do what they like even though it is against the will of god and when godly people oppose them they want to remove them from the way they want to kill them also 
So that is what David is saying. O oh God, the proud have risen against me, and a mob of violent men have sought my life to kill him, kill a good person. What is the wrong he has done? There's no wrong written there, but because they are violent, because they are wrong, they want to kill a good person. But you, O oh Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abun abundant in mercy and truth. And in the last it says here, 16th and 17, O oh, turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant. Last of all, finally, we, we come to God. Unless he strengthens us, we cannot overcome. We cannot overcome and we cannot. We cannot in our life be overcomers or be able to, go, to overcome our situation. It is God's hand that is upon our life and because His blessing and His strength is with us, we are able to do the things that we could not do. May God bless us and help us to depend more upon God so that His blessing will rest upon us. May God bless you with this psalm.